Your homework today is talking about writing equations for a specific population. And so it's really important that you pay attention to this equation. I, I wrote it out for you, but you might want to put a star around it or something. But if you want to find the population, um, if it's changing at a constant rate uh, for each year, P sub zero, just like um, A in our other model is our initial amount, P sub zero is your initial population. Right, so that's like the problems that we did over 3-1 when it said in 1800 the population was this much. That was the initial population. This is the rate that the population is either growing or decaying, depending on if the population is getting bigger or smaller. And they're always going to tell you that rate as a percentage. But you don't ever put a percentage in your problem, right? You're always going to change that to decimal. So if it's growing at 5%, um, you're not going to put 5 in there. You're going to put 0 0.05. And so make sure you pay attention to that. Uh, and P is the time in years. So the big difference between what we did in 3.1 with the, the population and what we're doing now is we're going to write our own equations. Uh, and that's a big part of your homework today. So make sure that you remember this is kind of your equation that you're, you're using when you're doing this. So let's look at the problem. Just like on 3.1, part of your homework today is just asking you, is this growth or decay? But notice it's kind of fitting that population model. Um, also, it says find the constant percentage rate of growth or decay. So remember, I'm going to rewrite this equation up here. P of T equals P sub 0 times 1 plus R to the T power. So when you look at number 1 there, and it says 3.5 times 1.09 to the T power, if this is the number in the middle, can you tell me what R has to be in that problem? Kimberly says 9%. Like if this is 1 plus R, if 1 plus R equals 1.09, that means R has to equal 0 0.09. So it's not supposed to be a trick problem here. You're supposed to be able to look at that, and if you know your formula, you're like, oh, R is 0 0.09, or we could say 9%. <coughs> Would you say that's growing? Is the population going to get bigger or get smaller over time? Let's just wait. Let's look at number two and see if we can figure out what the rule's going to be here. On number two, it's 43, that would be our initial population, times 0 0.05t. So again, I think a good place to start is figure out what is r. And again, it's not a tricky problem every time. This has to equal 1 plus r. So if 1 plus r equals 0 0.05, what does r equal in this one? How do you solve this equation for r? Subtract 1, right? This is not complicated math here. Subtracting 1. And what is 0 0.05 minus 1? Negative point. 9.5. What do you think? Uh, so if we wrote this as a decimal, that would be like negative 95 percent. Which one are you? Which one of these is growing, and which one of these is getting smaller? One is growing. How can you tell? This is a positive number. Also, what do you notice about this number? It's bigger than 1, because it's always 1 plus something. So if your rate is growing at a positive rate, this number is going to always be bigger than 1. It's getting larger, bigger than 100% after so many years. And look at this one. When you solve for r and you get a negative number, it makes sense it's getting smaller. And look at this. If this is smaller than 1, we talked about growth and decay. If the base is smaller than 1, 
and the exponent is positive, that's always going to be a decay function. So those are supposed to be things that uh, we know about growth and decay. So I would say this is a 9% growth. By saying growth, I'm answering both questions. Is it growth or decay? And what is my ex my rate? I don't like to give an answer of negative 95% because I think that sounds weird to say it's negative 95%. But I'm going to say it's 95% decay. And by saying decay, I'm implying that it's getting smaller. It's decaying at a rate of 95% per year, which means there's not going to be much population left pretty soon. Questions about where I'm getting that? So the second part of your homework is they're going to give you some information. They're going to tell you the initial population, and they're going to tell you the rate of growth and decay, and they're going to have you write the equation. So it's kind of going backwards. Like, they're going to give you this information, and you got to come up with this part. So it's really important that you realize uh, about that formula. So let's look at these two then. And this, again, is the majority of your homework today. So determine the exponential function that satisfies the given condition, just like we did before, except for now, when they're talking about a population model, I expect that your answers are going to look like this. The population of t equals t sub 0, which is my initial population, times 1 plus r to the t power. The reason you have to put the 1 in there and you don't just take the rate that it's increasing is if you don't put the 1 plus r, you're only going to get how much it's increasing each year and not the new population. And so that's part of what, where that equation comes from. But basically, if you know that equation, you're just um, filling in there, right? You just got to know what the numbers are. So if the initial value is 5, where do I plug that in? P sub 0. And it's increasing at 17%, which tells me that my R is positive. And what am I going to plug in there for R? 17? 0.17, right? You change that percent to decimal. And obviously, you're probably not going to write that every time. You're going to go straight for the answer. But you're going to say 5 times 1.17 to the T power. Anytime you have an increasing population, your uh, base there should be bigger than 1. So uh, do the second one, if you haven't already. And then uh, how about let's use these boards under our desk that we never use and write the answer to the second one after you write it on your paper and hold it up so I can make sure we're good on this before we get to the story about it. is the same as 17 out of 100, which is 0.17. So if it's 2.6, even though the point's already there, it would be 0 0.026, right? Zero point zero two six is your R, right? And it's not just R in there, it's 1 plus R. Decreasing, right? This is the key word here. What does decreasing mean for our problem, for our R? No, I think you're right.
It's 1 plus r. So if r is negative, Sawyer, what are you going to be doing on here? You're going to take 1 minus 0 0.026. Could that be a negative number? Do that on your calculator again. 7 plus 0 0.026. So, the good thing about doing this one is we've noticed the big difference here. Notice they don't tell you hey, plug in negative for R, but they do tell you that it's decreasing, and these are the key words there. Increasing means it's getting bigger and R is going to be positive. Decreasing means that your R is negative. So when you do this, you have 28,900 times 1 minus 0 0.026. And a nice way to check your answers is if your rate is decreasing, that number in the, the base has to be smaller than 1. So if you do that problem on your homework and you get a number bigger than 1, but you notice it's decreasing, like you just got to remember that you got to go back and subtract that. Um, what was it, 974? Yes? Okay, so the other part of this is actually looking at some story problems instead of just basic ones here. So Again, what makes these different from the ones that we did in 3.1 is in 3.1 we were writing these logistic equations and they were kind of crazy problems. Um, these are increasing at a constant rate, and so that's what makes us able to write our own equation. It says the 2,000 population of Jacksonville, Florida was 736,000 and was increasing at a rate of 1.49% each year. No. <laughs> At that rate, when will the population be 1 million? So you have kind of two steps on these problems. Step one is going to be write your equation just like we've been doing. And then step two is we're going to solve these. And we can talk about solving them with our calculators the way we did before. And then we can talk about solving them using a graph, which is what I'm hoping that we'll do today. Um, so I'm going to write the formula again. P sub 0 times 1 plus R to the T power. What is my initial population in this one? 736,000. Remember on the ones that we did um, in 3-1, how it would be like in millions, and they wouldn't actually, they wouldn't use all those zeros in the actual equation. Like if it was 4.2 million, they just used 4.2 in the problem. You always have that option, and, it's, and I think it's a good option, especially when you're graphing it. And so I'm going to kind of write two equations in a minute and kind of show you the options here. And you just have to remember that your answer would be in thousands on this one. But I'll leave it like this for a second. Um, what would my R be on this one? They tell me, right? It's increasing at a rate of 1.49%. Sorry. So uh, move it back two decimal places. And is that going to be a positive R or a negative R? Positive, because it's increasing. So I'm going to take 1 plus 0 0.0149. And again, you can just do that all at once. I, I would do it all at once. So that would be 1.0149 to the T power. Also notice, <coughs> they tell us what year that started with. And think back what we did in 3.1. In 3.1, they would say where T represents the number of years since 2000. That's kind of what this one is, too. So they tell us the population in 2000. So when we're thinking about values of T, we're not going to actually plug in, like, 2010, 2020. We're just going to plug in how many years since that year. And that's kind of how all these problems always work. 
just want you to keep that in mind. Um, if I want to know when will the population be in 1 million, do you remember how we did this uh, on 3-1 homework? What did I make you do? Well, no, you actually could put 1 million over here, but we haven't talked about how to solve this yet. We kind of did a guess and check thing. Do you remember that? Like in our notes, and I said, could we just guess the years until we got to 1 million? And we can still do that. But I also want to show you that we can graph this, and we can just try to figure out when will it equal 1 million. Um, but I'm going to let you use the graphing calculator. So let me pass things out so we can kind of talk about this. Okay. So here's the thing about using these big numbers, and we'll do this one with the big numbers, but I just want to show you, if we graph this, <coughs> when we plug in 0 for t, which is kind of like our x value, what are we going to get for our y value? 736,000, which means our graph is going to need to be really big, which is okay, because we can change the scale on our graph, but you can also change this around. Um, and you can make these numbers smaller. Like if you wanted to write the same equation, you could say, what if I just drop these zeros off and I make this 736 times 1.0149. But you have to remember that when you get your answer, it's in thousands. So on this one, when you plug zero in, you get 736. But you'd have to just say, oh, that's 736,000. So it's going to be some smaller numbers. So, your option here, but you don't have to do that. We're going to um, graph this, and we want to know when it would equal 1 million. So we're also going to graph the equation y equals 1 million. What's the line uh, y equals 1 million going to look like? Straight across, right? At 1 million? And if I want to know when this equals this, what am I looking for? <coughs> if I want to know when does this equation equal this equation on a graph, what am I looking for? But what would that look like on my graph is what I'm asking. You're just randomly guessing. When it reaches it, which means like when they cross, when they touch, when they intersect, or when two equations are equal to each other. And so what we're looking for when we graph these is where do they intersect. But we need to look at how we change our window because our window is not going to go to 1 million right now. So let's uh, graph this if you haven't already. You did not say any of that. X-intercept, Y-intercept, asymptotes are not where they cross. You need to use x and not t. This is when you graph on the graphing calculator, it graphs in terms of x and y. So if you put t in there, it's going to say error. But you can still graph the same thing, just change your t to uh, as x. Seven hundred thirty-six. That's the right thing. 1.0149. 1.0149. Parentheses, and then you hit the caret button to say X on it, and you're going to put a caret on it, and the X is right here next to the alpha, right under mode. Okay. Don't put that caret there, it's going to multiply by X, not take it to the power of X. 
And then I want it to cross at 1 million, so I'm going to type in 1 million. 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now don't hit graph yet because your graph is not going to show you anything right now because that zero is at 736,000, which means we need to change our window. And that's the nice thing about using technology is I wouldn't want to make a graph this big, but if you go to window, which is the second button right here, you can make your X and Y axis anything you want it to be. Um, on my X axis, what does X represent my problem here? Your time, right? How many years? So do I need any negative X values up there? No. So I'm going to change this. This is my X minimum. I'm going to change that to zero. And my maximum, I'm not really sure. I don't know what the answer is. So maybe I'm going to choose like, let's see, in 2000, it was 736,000. So it doesn't seem like it would be that many years. So yeah, maybe let's choose 50. You could try something smaller if you want. But that's kind of, you have to just kind of ch check that a few times. Do you remember what this button represents? Yeah, what it goes by. So if you want it to go by ones, you can. And since it's going in 50s, I think I'm going to change mine to 10, so I don't have so many lines on my graph, so I go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Why is my population? Am I going to ever have a negative population? What do I know is my population at time equals zero? 736, which means really we could start our minimum at 736 because we know that's our lowest number. You could start it at zero if you want. It's kind of up to you. What do you think? 736,000? Let's see. Yeah. Uh, we want to know where it crosses a million. So if we set our max at um, a million, it's going to be the very top of our graph. So I think I want to go a little bit more than a million so I can see it. So let's do, yeah, that's fine. We'll do 1.2 million. And um, I'm going to make my scale go by, I don't know, 100,000. Does that sound right? I'm just trying to make it so it's easy to read here. And this is the feature that yes, guess and check is going to work just fine. And on your homework today, if you run out of time, you can use guess and check. But I just want to show you how we can use these graphs to help us. So what should happen if we've entered this incorrectly and we've entered our equations incorrectly, now when I hit graph, I should get my population growth. No, notice it's increasing. I should get my 1 million mark. And what I'm looking for is where they cross. And you can just use your arrow button. Um, but there's also a, a button on here that actually tells you where they cross, um, if you want me to show you that. But you can also just use these arrows. Like, you can go over here, and you can get a rough estimate of where do those cross. Hmm, see, like, is it 20 years? Is it 20.21? See, I don't know. Let me show you this real quick, all right? It's really easy. It's much easier than the, the max min that we started with. But under count, so if you hit second, trace, you get this lovely menu that is a really cool menu on the graphic calculator. And if I want to find where two equations cross, which number do you think I'm going to hit? Intersect. Yeah, I want to know where they intersect, and I'm going to hit number five. And the great thing is they ask you which two curves do you want to know. We only have two of them. So notice it's on my exponential, and it says first curve. I'm just going to hit enter. And then it jumps to the second curve. Yep, that's my second curve. And then it wants me to guess, like get close to it. Let's see, I think it intersects right there. And it's going to tell me at exactly what year does that equal 1 million. If you just remember to go to Calc, you'll kind of, it kind of tells you what to do. <laughs> right, and it depends on how accurate you want to get. Um, we could say at about 20.73 years, 
which would mean if we're going to the next whole year, I agree with you, Logan, we would say uh, in 2021 would be the, the first whole year that that would happen. So about 2021. It says, suppose the half-life of a certain radioactive substance is 20 days, and there are 5 grams present initially. Find the time when there'll be 1 gram of this substance remaining. And we're going to do these a lot as we get into logarithms and solve them with algebra. Um, but there's one on your homework like this, and I just want to show you that it's a little different than uh, the other ones. It's not a population <coughs> model as much of saying... Uh, what's happening here because it's the half-life. And do you remember what that means? What does half-life mean? The amount of time it takes for half of it to decay, which means in 20 days for this one, half of it is gone. And so we could say if 5 grams are present when it starts at time t equals 20, how much do we know is going to be left? 2.5. And so we can use that to kind of set up these equations. Um, so this one kind of goes back to our, our normal one. Like I'm not going to do the 1 plus because there's no 1 plus on this one. I'm just going to use my normal equation. Y equals A times B to the X or T if you want to use time there. I, I don't know. I think I want to use time. the base, like at what rate it's decaying, basically. So this is kind of a weird one, and I just wanted to kind of show you this, and I I don't always do them this way, and if you've done it in chemistry, you might not have always done it this way, but it does actually work out. What is A going to represent every time? My initial value, so we know that's 5. Because we're talking about half-lifes, my base is going to be 1 half. Now here's the tricky part of this. Anytime you're doing these half-life problems, um, you got to figure out what could I make my exponent so that in 20 days that there will be half of this left, so half of 5. And what it turns out to be every time is you're going to take t divided by the half-life, t divided by 20. So Let's kind of write this out so you can do it on your homework. This is your initial amount. You already know that. This never changes. Because we're talking about half-life, we can use that base of a half. And this number will always be whatever the half-life is. And just like the other one, if I want to find when there'll be one gram left, could I do guess and check, like just keep plugging in different numbers for T until I get one left? Or could I graph this along with what other equation would I graph on this one? Now y equals 1, because I want to know when there'll be one gram left. I'm going to graph this. And am I going to need such giant numbers on my window on this one? So these are really small numbers, which means you got to make sure you go back and check that window. That's the most important thing.
like this. And I'm going to try five times. Really important here that you put this in parentheses. You have to put one divided by two parentheses. On the graphing calculator, there is no fraction button. You just use the division sign. And if you don't put that in parentheses, it's only going to take that two to the power and not the whole one half. And then I'm going to hit my caret button again. And again, you need to put this in parentheses. My calculator up here is updated, so it kind of puts it right up there. But your calculator is not. It just puts the caret. So you have to put parentheses x divided by 20. If you do not use those parentheses, it won't give you the right equation. So it's really important that, that you do that. And then this one, my second equation, is just going to be 1, not 1 million. window. <coughs> what do you think? How many days should we go? Zero to 50? You think we can stick with that? If you graph it and it doesn't intersect, that means you it needs to be more than 50 because it's not intersecting yet, but I'll just leave it like that. I'll leave my scale here. Uh, my y minimum, I'm going to put it at zero this time because again, I'm never going to get less than zero. I just want to see where it intersects at one Go above 1. So I, I don't know, you go to 5, but really it doesn't matter. As long as you go bigger than 1, like I'll just go to 3. Because if you just go to 1, that will be at the very top of your graph. You'll have a hard time seeing that. And again, when you graph this, you should see um, two graphs on your paper. You should see an exponential decay because that radioactive substance is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And you should see that line y equals 1. Oh, look, it barely fit it in there. 50 days. And then you can hit that intersection button and see what you get. Okay. So it's Help, right? It's really important that you write that. Five times one half caret parentheses x divided by 20. If you don't put in parentheses, it's going to do order of operations. If you wanted to be really accurate, you could change that 0.44 of the day into hours. Um, that kind of goes back to your chemistry days. If you wanted to say there's 0.44 of the day, what would I multiply by to change that into hours? How many hours are in a day? So I could say there are 24 hours in one day, so I get those days to cancel out. So I could be really accurate and I could say 46 hour or 46 days, sorry. And I think that works out to be about 11 hours. Because I was just, uh, like, if you actually wanted to do this and you were a scientist, you want to know how many hours that's going to happen at so you can know exactly what that's going to be. So I just changed the decimal, 0.44 of a day. How much is that? A little less than half of a day. And so I just did a little chemistry to show you that you could do that. You'll have to do that, but check your, your answer. Yes, one second. Um, here's your homework. 3 through 21 multiples of 3. Those are just writing equations. And then 30, 33, and 34. Those are the ones that I was hoping that we could graph. Um, you have a couple minutes. You can at least get your pa paper labeled and see maybe if you get, could get number 30 started. If not, I might, uh, maybe we'll do like the first five minutes of class tomorrow, maybe ten minutes. Try to get here early and we'll do the graphic calculator uh, first thing. You really
really can do 30, 33, and 34 by guess and check, but I'll give you some time tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Thirty-three and thirty-four. You can write those equations. Like, when you come in here tomorrow, have your equations written. 